This Fizzcast will go through some basics of using vectors. A vector is a quantity that is described not just by a value or a number, but also by a direction. We call the size of the vector its magnitude. An example of a vector that we might come across will be velocity. Velocity tells us two things. It tells us how fast something is moving, and it tells us in what direction the motion is. So there we have how fast is the magnitude, the size of the velocity, and of course the direction is obviously telling us the direction of the velocity. We might write that using a symbol V with an arrow over the top. And the arrow there is to indicate this is not just a number, but also it has a direction. We can imagine maybe something having a velocity of, say, 30 meters per second, heading upwards at 60 degrees to the horizontal. And again, that's a vector because it has a magnitude, 30 meters per second, and a direction. Here it's indicated in words as upwards at 60 degrees to the horizontal. Sometimes we only want to know the magnitude, so we might write that just as the symbol without the arrow on the top. Another way might be to write the vector with absolute value signs around it. That's indicating the magnitude of the vector, and in this case that would simply be 30 meters per second. And we might call that the speed. It's just the magnitude of the velocity. One way that we can indicate a vector that includes both the magnitude and the direction information all at once is to draw the vector as an arrow. For example, this might be our vector v. And the length of the arrow is telling us something about the size of the vector. Here this length would indicate, for example, a magnitude of 30 meters per second. The direction of the arrow, of course, contains our directional information. In this case, we were told it was going upwards at 60 degrees to the horizontal. Sometimes we need to add two vector quantities. It's important to remember we can't just add their magnitudes in general. These are quantities that also have directions. So how can we add two vectors? Well, imagine we had a vector here we will call vector A and we had some other vector we wanted to add to that, for example this vector here, which we'll call vector b. How would we add those two together? What we'd really like to find out is what a plus b looks like. Of course that will be a vector, it will be something that has a magnitude and a direction. The rule we can use when we have our vectors drawn as arrows is we add the vector arrows head to tail. So vector A we would then add vector B to, just like that. So we take the start of vector B from the end of vector A. And then what we find is that we have a vector from the start of the first to the end of the last, and that vector there is indeed the vector A plus B. And you can see it will have a magnitude, the size of the arrow, it will have a direction, whatever direction that arrow is pointing in. Um, and importantly, uh, as you can see from the diagram, and I think as you can imagine from the geometry of it, the magnitude of that vector A plus B does not equal the magnitude of A plus the magnitude of B. So it's very important, of course, that we don't just add the magnitudes when we're adding vectors. Now, if we can always add two vectors together, as we've seen, we can always think of any vector that we have as being the sum of some other vectors. For example, I could imagine this vector right here. I might call that vector A again. I can think of it as being made up from adding two other vectors. And it's usually useful to think of vectors that align with some set of axes. So I could imagine this vector here being added to this vector here, and of course they will equal my original vector. And I could say, well I've chosen those two vectors because I'm thinking 
of a set of coordinates where maybe upwards is the y direction and at right angles to that a crossways is my x direction and these two vectors here are at right angles. I can label these two vectors that add up to my a vector I could call the one that is going in the x direction a with a subscript x and I can call the one that's going in the y direction a with a subscript y and in fact I call those two vectors the components of vector A. AX is the X component and AY is the Y component of those vectors. One thing you can see straight away if you remember your Pythagoras theorem is you can now tell something about the magnitude of these vectors, how they relate to each other. For example, A squared, the square of the magnitude of the original vector, will be the sum of AX squared plus AY squared because it's a right angle triangle Pythagoras theorem relates each of those magnitudes A, AX and AY and also I can use some other geometry here for example if I know the angle that that vector A makes with the uh, X axis for example I can see that cosine of that angle cosine theta will be equal to the adjacent side AX divided by the hypotenuse which is A and that tells me straight away that the x component in this case is simply a multiplied by cosine theta and then very similarly the sine of that angle sine theta which will equal the opposite which is a y divided by the hypotenuse which is a and that tells me straight away that the y component is simply a times the sine of that angle one of the useful things that can be done using vector components is to add vectors without relying upon how well I can draw and measure angles. So instead of using the head to tail approach, which is certainly one way to add vectors, I can instead think about using their components. For example, as I had before, if this was a vector A up here, and this is vector B down there then I can of course find the sum of those two as I'm drawing here and I might call that vector C for example here and I know that C is simply A plus B and I can think of vector C in terms of its X component and its Y component just as I did before. But then one thing that becomes quite easy to do is to realize that the x component of that vector there is simply the x component of the a vector plus the x component of the b vector. And remember these are just numbers now, the direction is already given because I'm looking at them in the x direction. I can do the same thing with the y component it will simply be equal to the y component of A plus the y component of B. And again if I know enough information I can use trigonometry to determine these components then I simply add the components up and if I, what, I, what I really wanted to know at the end is the magnitude and direction of vector C well if I know its components I can use trigonometry and Pythagoras to find out all the information I need to know about vector C. Now what if it's not adding vectors that I want to do? What if it's a situation where I want to actually subtract vectors? How does that work? Well it works almost exactly the same way. Again if I had my vector A pointing along there and I wanted to say now find a different vector I wanted to find vector C it's now equal to A minus B. I want to subtract vector B away from vector A. And the way to think about this is this is vector A added to the vector minus B. So remember before I had vector B that looked a little bit like this. Well vector minus B looks almost the same but points in exactly the opposite direction. So there is vector minus B pointing in the exact opposite direction. So now if I want to do vector A minus B, I take vector A 
and I subtract off b by adding the vector minus b. And now my vector c is simply again going from head to tail. And again, what I would do in practice is I would probably not do that with a diagram to get the exact answer. I would probably go along and I'd calculate the x component of c, which will be the x component of a plus the x component of minus b. And I would find the y component of c, which would be equal to the y component of a plus minus the y component of b. And I would need to use some trigonometry and some Pythagoras theorem here to actually do this with numbers. The one last thing to mention here is we're using a lot of triangles. When we draw these diagrams we're using triangles. Certainly for each of the vectors, if we try to think about it in terms of its components, for example in the x and y directions, we're going to be doing lots of triangles with our sides in the x and y direction. Sometimes you're tempted to think, well, rather than do all of this using components and adding them up and then reconstructing, I could just use some laws that I know, for example, the cosine rule for triangles or the sine rule for triangles. And that's quite reasonable. It's still important to learn these techniques for using components because sometimes you don't just need to add or subtract two vectors. You might need to add or subtract three or, or ten or, or some very large number of vectors. You can always find the component of each one of those vectors and add them up. Once you've got more than two vectors added up, you don't end up with a triangle, you end up with some you know, reasonably complicated shape. You could imagine if you're adding you know, this vector to this vector to this vector to this vector to that vector, where now the, the final sum of all of those is this one here. Uh, there's no easy way to use, even if you know all of these angles, to use a cosine rule or a sine rule. But of course if you find the components of each of these vectors and add them up using components, then the same rule of adding up all the x components to find the x component, adding up all the components, y components to find the y component, that's the same rule no matter how many of these vectors you're adding up.